Hi everyone, I'm Oliver from Blenders.com and this time we're going to take a look at Freestyle Rendering. Uh, Freestyle is a mode for Blender that allows for uh, non-photorealistic render and uh, what it does is to actually detect the edges and borders of our 3D scene and create lines on them, alright? It has a lot of options to uh, select uh, different edges, to, uh, you know, how to represent them and that, that a lot of options will allow us to create uh, very artistic effects like, uh, you know, cartoon, uh, cell shading, um, blueprint effects, uh, you know, a lot of different uh, 2D artistic effects, even sketchy looks, uh, you know, it's kind of great and uh, very artistic and even abstract if you want. Okay, so, uh, well, uh, there is no point in me explaining it more, all right? It's better that we go into it and uh, try to use it so you can understand better what I'm talking about. So I created this very quickly, this little uh, and simple piece of furniture, just to show you how freestyle works in Blender, all right? Because it's a model, uh, some kind of a technical model that we can use um, to make it look like a blueprint. So um, the first thing we need to do is to go here to the render panel, slide it down and activate here freestyle. Open it and here as you can see we have some line thickness options and uh, this is the absolute, this is the, the, this is the measurement of, of the thickness in pixels, all right? And if it's relative, it will create some kind of a relation of the line thickness and the uh, width and height of the, of the picture. Right, so uh, never mind because we are going to tweak this in the in the advanced option. We are going to jump there in a moment. Okay, we can click here or we can just go right here and here we have the options. But before, I just want to press F12 and take a look on what's going on. So as you can see, it makes the render as usual. We I, I don't have any materials, by the way. Keep in mind that I'm using Blender Render, the Blender internal rendering because um, and Cycles doesn't support uh, freestyle, right? Later I will tell you how you can uh, take the lines and export them uh, to um, to mix them with Cycles Render. But uh, for now, we need to render it on the Blender Render. So as you can see here, we have the materials, all right, as uh, normally, but on top of them, Blender is putting this line. Uh, this is really cool because it allows us to create some cartoon-like, um, you know, materials and add the lines on the borders and everything, right? So it's pretty, it's pretty nice. And uh, you can see it's really simple to activate the lines. Now the kind of difficult part, it's not really difficult, but you need to, to get used to it uh, because we have a lot of options on how to tweak these lines and make them look cool. So in this tutorial in particular, uh, I don't want to render the materials, I just want the lines, right? Because I want to achieve a blueprint effect. So I just want the background and the lines. So what I need to do is to deactivate here in the in the render layers, in the pass, passes, deactivate, uh, combine and set, all right? So the only thing that Blender is going to render now is the lines. And there we have the lines. So now what we are going to do is to make the lines um, appear on white and uh, Add a lot of lines here and uh, well basically enter into the meat of uh, freestyle rendering okay so uh, let's open this uh, these three sub panels um, keep in mind that you can open them not only by clicking in the in this little arrow but also by putting your cursor on top of that uh, panel and pressing a in the keyboard and if you press a again it will close so it's kind of handy. All right, so let's start taking a look at the options we have. So here first, uh, we can just uh, jump into Python scripting mode, but uh, <laughs> I have no idea by, about Python almost, so I, I will stay in the parameter editor mode. <laughs> okay, so here we have the crease angle. You know, this is like the threshold of uh, degree that an angle has to have in order to freestyle for uh, you know, detecting an edge, okay? This is the calling option. This will make some uh, edges that are not in view to be ignored, all right? So it can increase the performance, but in the documentation of Blender, um, they recommend to not use it 
because uh, it can create some kind of issues. I, I guess it's because if some edge is partially only in view, uh, it can create some issues, all right? So I prefer to not uh, activate it, but if you have a really, really uh, big uh, scene, maybe you can activate it to increase performance, right? The face smoothness, it, it will make that Blender uh, the text, the, the smoothness of the faces, right? If they are smooth or flat in order to detect them in the edges. And um, also here we have these uh, two advanced options, which are the sphere radius and the KR derivative epsilon. What is that? <laughs> right, to be honest, I don't know what these uh, options do because I just tried them. And uh, in documentation, they are like very technical uh, explanations, I, I didn't underst understood them, and um, I just tried them, but I didn't find any big difference, all right, so uh, I just ignored them, um, because we have options enough here to, to, to play with. All right, so these are the line sets, so we need to create different uh, line sets to create different kind of lines, all right, so for example, if you saw the, um, the, the introduction animation, you would see that we have some lines for the edges that are in front of us, all right, the, the edges that we are seeing, and another kind of dashed line for the edges that are behind the model, all right, the edges that are on the back side. So uh, for that, we need to create uh, different line sets, okay, because each line set will have um, some kind of, uh, you know, um, conditions to be shown, all right. So uh, here in, in each line set, we need to uh, tweak these options here to make each line set uh, work differently. For example, this is the, we can do it by the a selection, all right? And uh, I will tell you later how you can go into the model and select some given edges to, to always appear. So you can uh, take this uh, selection in account here. You can uh, do it by visibility. For example, right now we are only watching the visible ones, all right? But with the hidden, we can make, we can select the edges that are in the back side, right? We will see all this uh, in a moment, so don't worry if you don't understand it right now. Okay, so here we have the edges that uh, Blender is detecting, all right? So here, for example, if we had some marked edges, we should activate this. As we have no edges marked at the moment, if we activate this, there will be no, um, no uh, difference, right? Let's only activate the contour. Let's see what happens. Okay, so with this, we on, we are only having the some kind of the silhouette of each different object, all right? As this is uh, an object, we are only having the contour of it. Let's activate the border and see what happens, right? No big difference. Let's pick the silhouette. All right, so this is picking something something else. The crease. Right, kind of the same thing. And if we activate everything, let's see what we have. Right, so as you can see, this is too much. All right, usually the reeds and valley and uh, all this uh, stuff. Here, as we have a lot of faces because it's smoothed out, um, it's detecting that there is some kind of an angle there and uh, it's working a little strangely. All right, let's deactivate that one. So we have less stuff. This is the suggestive contours and so this is kind of what we are looking for all right and uh, then I show you how to tweak this all right and how to add more lines but for now let's uh, go ahead with this so now here in the freestyle freestyle line style we can just go here and in the color panel let's go ahead and put it on white so right now we have some white lines this is nice. So as you can see here, we can control, uh, well, let's go back. Here in the freestyle line set, we decide which edges uh, Blender is detecting and showing up. And then in the freestyle line style, we have a lot of options to tweak how that edges are shown in the render. So we can go here to, um, to the strokes options, right? So here you have this sketchy one that will basically create uh, several lines in the same position so if you don't tweak them you will see the same but then if we add more uh, modifiers that we are going to see in a moment you can see how uh, they are like more sketchy because we have 
several lines into the same position and we can offset them a little so it appears like if we drawn uh, several lines for doing this this uh, unique uh, shape okay so chaining what is chaining chaining is to uh, pick several different strokes and joining them because they are like uh, very close so if we disable it you will see what happens and uh, well apparently as they are kind of uh, you know far from the camera we are not seeing them and actually we don't have uh, different uh, different thickness in the in the strokes so let me go first to the thickness so here we are in the thickness here we can tweak the thickness of this um, of these strokes let's add a modifier right here in some of the options we have modifiers that we can apply to um, to our stroke so here we can pick for example the based on the distance from camera or the distance from a given object we can decide the thickness of the of the strokes so for now I'm going to use a long stroke this means that uh, along the stroke the thickness of the stroke will change let's try it so as you can see some parts are basically almost non-visible right while in other ones here you can see it here is completely uh, inexistent here is starting to gain thickness and finally is the more thick at all because it's going from 0 to 1 pixels so when it's on 0 pixels is kind of uh, you know difficult because uh, well it's less than 1 pixel so it's not shown up in the image so let's put the 1 here as a minimum and a maximum of 10 and let's see what happens so as you can see now as the um, stroke starts is like at 1 and it starts growing in thickness right so this um, this makes it looks look a little like uh, you know when you paint with a um, uh, stylus or something like that all right but instead of linear I want to make a curve and here with this curve we can define how the stroke gains uh, thickness so here at this point what will happen is uh, something like this at the beginning of the stroke it will start at the minimum it will grow in the center of the stroke and then it will decrease again until it gets to the minimum uh, uh, again all right so let's just uh, put this on something like five and here we have it so as you can see it starts from the minimum it grows a little in thickness and then it comes back to one right so it looks like uh, you know if we are with a stylus uh, just drawing in ink okay uh, so now we have the thickness and that let's deactivate enable chaining so you can see what it is and this is what happens as this uh, you can see these uh, strokes here they are different strokes because there is some kind of an angle all right so what it's doing is that it's detecting them as different strokes so they are a start grow in thickness and end and then another one starts but as they start and end in the same position if we enable chaining they will just be converted into the same stroke right so it gives a nicer look okay so here we have a lot more options okay but for now uh, we're going to go with this the color we have the alpha all right we can change the alpha and just for uh, showing you let's do it as distance from camera okay and uh, let's actually go out from this select the the furniture and fill rate range by selection right so it's already selected so here you can see what happens the areas that are closest to the camera are being transparent while the ones uh, that are more far away from the camera are being completely opaque right so you can uh, you know this is because we are applying this modifier to the alpha we can also apply it to the color and what it will do distance from the camera and uh, fill range by selection and there you have it in the here close to the camera is black here we have black is like some kind of a C depth uh, channel okay so close to the camera is on uh, black and farther from the camera is white you can apply this for a lot of things like um, in the transparency you can make uh, as you go away from the camera it's transparent right so you can achieve some kind of mist effect um, 
only in the strokes, okay? But for now, let's go ahead with the normal one. All right. Okay, let's be, let's see something else. Okay, by default, we have this sampling modifier. Uh, I actually didn't, uh, don't know what this does, but if we deactivate it, basically we get the same result. So I don't actually know. Okay, uh, here I'm going only to show you some of these modifiers because they are a lot and you can try them by yourself, but I'm going to show you some of the kind of most interesting ones. Okay, so Bessier Curve, we have here the Bessier Curve. So here is what it does, all right? We can decrease this effect like to three. Okay, and what it does is that it create it makes the strokes uh, to work like Bessier Curves, so it gives some kind of a more artistic look to the image, all right? It looks uh, kind of cool, like, uh, you know, if we didn't know how to paint <laughs> or something, all right? And it uh, looks like the arrow doesn't influence too much, okay? All right, so this is one of the modifiers. Then we have, for example, the backbone stretcher. I love this one because uh, what this one does is, I will show you, in the end of the of the lines is like, it keeps painting for a little, all right? So it's like, uh, it's not perfect, not perfect strokes, but they continue after we finish uh, painting, you know? So we can increase them a lot. This is like the pixels. So as you can see, this will continue after 43 pixels, all right? Let's, uh, well, actually let's let this one work here. Right, then we have this blueprint effect. I love this one as well. It can uh, give us a lot of stuff. And uh, here, for example, we, it will create like circles, ellipses, or squares in the place of the objects. So look at this. It's some kind of square lines, all right? Everything is horizontal or vertical, and they are in the place of the objects, okay? So it's like, uh, it's like, yeah, it's some kind of blueprint, and it can give us some kind of, uh, you know, cool effects you have each one of these circles is a different object or stroke and let's try with ellipses so here you have so basically very abstractly you can figure out that this is the shape of the actual model we are rendering right these are here are the handles of the doors all right here in the middle is the mirror here are the the you know it's uh the same shape okay but we can deactivate it for now so you can keep uh, going and uh, we have some more ones like this polygonization that this converts it in is some kind of the one that I showed you before the Bezier curve but this one uh, creates makes the line go like polygons okay and uh, well I guess that with this we can uh, change how it looks okay so this is more polygonal and this is like less polygonal I guess zero to two Okay, so as you can see, it, you, you, have, you have to play with them. And something that I love is this uh, purling noise. Okay, let it be like this, just to check how it looks. So this gives some kind of a sketchy look to the, to the strokes. Okay, and here's when it enters this that I told you before. You know, this sketchy, round three. And is that, as you can see, there are some different lines. Okay. Here, the geometry, let's amplify the frequency. And, uh, well, it's not very clear. Maybe they are affecting everything. Okay, so here, as you can see, you can play a lot with this. The so sketches is, is not actually working out now. They work in my tests. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I will stop the tutorial and try to figure it out before I continue, okay? Okay, looks like uh, it depends on the modifier and that, okay? And I want to show you something that I discovered and then I show you the, this sketchy stuff. So if we disable uh, the chaining, you can go here, apply the backbone stretch. And uh, look at this, okay? As each part is a different stroke, it looks like a different effect, okay? I just wanted to show you because it's kind of interesting. All right, let's uh, enable the chaining again. 
And instead of a parallel noise 2D, let's apply this 1D, all right? I don't know actually the difference, <laughs> but uh, as you can see now, here we actually see uh, different strokes in each uh, in each one, okay? And uh, it's actually, uh, like, let's uh, increase this frequency and maybe 20. And as you can see, we have different strokes in the same positions, okay? And also we have something, uh, another modifier to increase this effect. Oh, you see, uh, I, I forgot about this one. Uh, is the 2D offset, I think. And this offset, um, it makes like uh, each one of that, just increase it just a little. It makes that different strokes to be offset. Let's uh, increase that effect. Here you have it. Here you have it. I knew it. You see? So as you can see with this offset, you can offset the different uh, strokes of the sketch G, of these sketch G options, all right? If we add more rounds, we can even make it more saturated. Okay, you see? So it's some kind of sketchy stuff. But let's keep this to something very small. Okay, let's also decrease this thing. Even less, like five. And here we can uh, apply the modifiers just as the normal modifiers of Blender. This looks kind of interesting, let's say. Let's decrease the amount of rounds. Let's try with playing. Let's see what we have. Wow, it's... <laughs> All right, so I guess I will deactivate the pearly noise for this one. Okay, something like this, and the backbone will be only like 13. All right, this is uh, this looks better for me. And now I will show you how to add, for example, here we are missing line, right here at the top as well, and also here we are missing lines. So I will show you how to mark lines in Blender so then um, Freestyle can represent them. First, let's press Escape to go out from this uh, render view. And uh, let's create the ones that I really know that are not being shown at the moment. So it's uh, this one, this one as well, and these guys. Okay, and here we probably can pick, I know, maybe these ones. Okay, so let's go with these ones for now and, let, and then we will check uh, what else is missing. So with these lines, we are going to make sure that they are shown in the, um, in the freestyle render and uh, we press Control E for the edges uh, panel. And now, uh, as we activated freestyle, apart from mark sharp and clear sharp, we can put here the mark freestyle edge, okay? And we can as well go back and clear them, all right? So now they are being marked as uh, green. So let's uh, just press F12, and you can see that these lines are now being shown, all right? This is exactly what we wanted. All right, now we need, for example, uh, to represent better this, uh, this area, okay? So let's go back, and I'm going to actually pick this and control E, mark freestyle edge. I know as well that this is not being shown and I want to show it. <clears throat> All right, mark freestyle edge, F12, and there we go. So we are now showing this, uh, this line, this one, uh, this whole curve, okay, and we are also missing these lines in the interior part. As this is a mirrored object, I only need to update one of the sides. And, uh, okay, so let's go with this. This one, which is in the interior part, and this one. Okay, because they are probably not visible now, but then 
I want them to be visible in the final render. Because when we show the hidden uh, edges, they will be shown. Okay, what else we can show up? Okay, maybe we can pick this, um, the doors. Okay, so mark freestyle edge and do the same with the doors in the bottom. Okay, control E and mark freestyle edge. Uh, keep in mind that uh, I selected these loops by pressing Alt and right click in one of them and it selects, uh, as you can see, the whole loop. Okay, just as this one. Okay, more stuff, more stuff. Okay, maybe we can show this whole two edges. Mark freestyle edge. And let's see what we have right now. All right, looking good. Now I'm going to show as well this, uh, these edges here. So Alt and right click in one of these edges, Control E, mark freestyle edge. For this one, they are instances, so I just need to uh, change one in order to change everything. So let's pick this one and control E mark freestyle edge. And actually also let's mark these two guys just to check how they look. And now, as you can see, we have a lot more detail in, the, in those lines. Okay. All right. So I think I have uh, everything, right? Just that maybe here, this, uh, this edge. And here, for example, let's mark these pieces. Okay, let's so for example mark all this. And, um, okay, I'd be like this. Okay, so now, as you can see, I have much more detail. And uh, here we can see as well that little hole, all right? So I think it's working pretty nice. So now what we are going to do is to show how to, um, you know, how to create the invisible lines that are in the back part of the model. Okay, so, um, well, let's uh, make sure, let's make sure that these lines are being shown. And for now they are being shown, but maybe just because they are in the, you know, in the contour of the model, but I want to be sure that they are going to be shown. So the best way to, be, to make sure that they are shown is to just go ahead, control E and mark freestyle edge, right? So I want these lines to be shown up. All right, and maybe these ones as well. Mark freestyle and uh, Okay, so I guess it's uh, it's done. All right, so now what I need to do is to create another line set. Let's call this main line art. All right, and now let's create a new one, which will be um, back lines. These are going to be the lines that are in the back. And uh, let's do, okay, here, select by visibility, all right? By the way, we need to, as you can see in the main line art, we have activated edge mark. If we deactivate edge mark, if we press F12, you can see that the um, edges that we marked as freestyle edges are not being shown, all right? So we need to make sure that we activate that option so it recognizes uh, that, uh, that edges, all right? So, Let's uh, activate that, activate the contour as well and the external contour, All right? We will see now how it looks. And also here, instead of visible, now I want to select the invis invisible, right? So now the hidden edges are going to be represented as we tell Blender to do it here. So let's press F12. And there you can see that we are now 
seeing the that uh, invisible um, yeah edges and uh, okay now it's time to tweak them okay so I want them to be white for example then we will tweak them a little so they are white and uh, these strokes I want them to be a dashed line and uh, I don't know exactly how this works okay but I know that this is some kind of to define the pattern all right the you know the distance between the 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 dashes okay and the and the length of them I guess so uh, I will just make it something like three three okay and with this we can define more the pattern but for now I'm going to go with this okay and as you can see we have just a little separation so make it bigger okay so this as you can see is some kind of the length of the line okay so we have longer lines and uh, maybe 10 is enough and with this one we create the distance between them okay so now we have more distance between that lines so let's just make it like this and let's just try okay I'm not sure if it will work but let's just try if we increase this and make this like 20 we should create here another pattern but it's not actually working as I expected so okay just delete it uh, I don't I really don't know how this pattern worked but I just want I, I just know that this is for uh, you know for creating the dashed lines okay so here uh, we are going to actually let's deactivate some of this uh, some of these parts some of these uh, you know these options so um, we only have the dashed lines where we want them right and this looks more natural to me all right now what we can do so they are not so really visible what we can do is to go to alpha and decrease the alpha like uh, 2.5 let's try all right even more like 0.2 okay so now we have the dashed lines and they are kind of transparent all right so this looks uh, kind of nice let's um let's move the camera okay if we press zero in the numpad we are going to see the camera which is animated following this empty that is rotating <clears throat> so let's take a look on how we see it from here all right so as you can see everything that is uh, behind is uh, shown in dashed lines which is exactly what I want okay and now it's time for the last uh, lines that I want to add maybe in the animation you notice them they are really subtle but I just like to make something to look a little sketchy okay so I just go here and add another ones that are going to be like sketchy lines okay and these lines are going to be kind of abstract but they are going to be jumping uh, from frame to frame around all right so I just want to activate all of these guys so we have a lot of lines going on okay something like this let's put them on white color as well and uh, now let's disable chaining let's go to the geometry and let's add a blueprint Effect. so maybe circles ellipses let's try with ellipses okay so as you can see we have a lot of sketchy stuff going on okay this is exactly what I want because now with this I can just go ahead polygon I say them let's see what we get okay something like that even actually I'm not polygonization them because uh, they look pretty nice like they are right now so what I'm going to do is to add a pearly noise. Let's see how it looks like. Okay, a lot sketchy. Let's increase the amplitude and the frequency. Now keep in mind that the angle here changes. You can see that now the noise is like going into 40 degrees, okay? So we can change that with this option. All right, so let's increase a lot. The frequency see what happens okay so let's 
put a lower frequency like um, I don't know maybe five and an amplitude of 30 let's see what we have all right let's let's uh, let's use this okay so now in the alpha I just want a really low value like 0 0.05 for example as you can see now we have like the normal lines and we have these ones going on as well doing some sketchy stuff but uh, not too much so maybe decrease even more the visibility like 0 0.03 all right now I also want the thickness to be like uh, a long stroke the maximum will be like 5 and uh, Let's make a curve and make it go like this. Right, just play a little with them. So now as you can see, uh, the progression of the thickness is kind of different. Okay, which is what, what I want. And uh, actually make them bigger, more thick. All right, there you have it, All right? This is way, way too much. Something like 15, maybe. All right, and uh, well, we have a lot of things going on right here. So maybe I just want to deactivate some of those options to compensate a little. Suggestive contour, all right. Right, this is a little more natural. And uh, what I want to do even now is to even decrease this a little more, like 0 0.01. This needs to be really subtle, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, um, uh, yeah, interfere in our visibility of the main lines, okay? But we see that there is something going on uh, in these sketches, all right? So we have that and well, we could keep playing with this a lot. Like for example, add uh, guiding lines. This guiding lines, actually what it does is to, it mess around everything, right? As you can see, we have some lines around here, but they are really, really upset. Let's play with it, all right? We have more lines now, but this is actually just, uh, it does a crazy stuff, all right? Let's put it before the noise to see what we have, all right? This is what we would get. So you can see, you can play with this uh, to create some kind of noise in the, in, the, in the painting, all right? And to give it even a more natural look, we could go ahead and play with, uh, let's say, this is the color. Let's put some kind of uh, bluish color so it mixes better with the background, right? And as you can see, it's even less visible. I don't know, it, probably in the capture, you are not uh, watching it uh, already. So we can go to the alpha and increase it a little and see what happens. Okay, okay, I like this one. Enable chaining, let's see what happens. All right, this is much, uh, much sketchy. It's just a matter of playing with it until you get something that you like. So I could be all the afternoon <laughs> recording this tutorial, but uh, I think I will just tweak a little more this and uh, let it go. <laughs> all right, now as we have a lot bigger strokes, maybe we can, um, you know, the backbone stretcher put this just after the blueprint and make it really big okay even more 100 and then probably apply I don't know um, polygonization make this before the pearling noise but make this very subtle Okay, so as you can see, it's kind of an interesting thing. 
Okay, this is a lot sketchy. All right, I like it. Um, it's kind of weird though, but <laughs> I don't care. It's like 0 0.2 maybe. Let's make it really subtle. All right, so it's kind of really subtle. We have the main lines going on and we have the dashed lines in the background. All right, so now we could just um, render the whole animation, okay? with control uh, F12, you can see that if we deactivate here in the render layers, if we deactivate the combine and seed, uh, it's uh, faster, the render is faster, right? You can see that we can use actually the the original material to, to, to go into it. Okay, we could add uh, cartoon materials, we could add, uh, you know, plain color materials. Uh, it's up to us, okay? The, the freestyle lines will be applied over that image. Now, if we wanted to make, for example, a, a, a cycles render of this, what we would need to do, or what I would do at least, is to render the lines, only the lines, all right, over a black background and the lines in white probably. So with this uh, rendered image, we could use that, uh, that image to use as a, you know, as a mask for another layer in, uh, over the cycles uh, in compositing, okay? So we could use this uh, as a mask. Um, the thing is that you need to render this before in a Blender internal, export it, all right? So render it in an image sequence or something like that, and then use that image sequence as a mask for another layer of the color you want for the lines in the compositor, right? That is the way I could go for it. Um, what else we can do around? Well, I think I pretty much covered the freestyle basics, all right? There is some more stuff that we can go uh, with. There are more modifiers and stuff. But, uh, well, as you can see, it's not difficult to use. It's really cool, right? It gives, it gives us a, a really cool effects. And uh, as I told you, you know, you can play a lot with the, um, with the thickness stuff and everything to get uh, lines like, you know, brushes, um, watercolors, uh, you know, you can get a lot of different effects and overall you can take this image and by the way, I just want to show you something and is that the freestyle lines, that is, that is the reason why I told you that you need to render it before you can import it into the compositor, right? But you need to export it in an image sequence because um, the freestyle lines doesn't appear in the compositor, okay? They are like uh, rendered into the combined uh, pass, okay? So if you have, if you do a render, this will be like impressed into the into the combined render. So you can only tweak it uh, from the combined. So it's kind of uh, you know kind of difficult. Uh, you can just render it like uh, like this, export it, then import it, and you can apply effects, distortions, and everything on the image sequence you render, right? So, well, I hope you learned something from this tutorial. I hope you liked it and see you soon in the next tutorial. Happy blending.